So today I'm invited to the Z8 launch in Futuromic. Before we do anything else, I'd like to say a big thank you to Futuromic for inviting me to this Z8 launch. It's an exciting event. I was surprised that so many people turned up the room was practically filled and thank you Thien Long, the manager, for going through all the details of the improvement and the features of the Z8. Can't wait to try this. And I'm also delighted to meet some of the subscribers of our YouTube channel in this event. And stay tuned as we do one more episode of a full review hands-on as I bring the Z8 out courtesy of Futuromic out about in the city and try out all these interesting, fascinating features of the Z8. Catch you soon. Oh, you know what? We should have brought SD cards. Do you have extra? Haha, <laughs> Yi Chong is always ready. Oh, so it's one. There's one. There's two. And there's three. But this is. I hear you can actually put this down. Hold this by the body. Let's put a really heavy one. This is a pretty interesting feature, extended shutter speed. What it does is that it allows you to change the minimum speed of most camera. At the moment, if you look at it, you can go right up to 30 seconds only. But if you were to come to your menu and turn this on, what it does is that it allows you to change it to 900 seconds. So this is useful when you're doing astral photography and it has this focus ring rotation range which most mirrorless lenses would have this problem where it's non-linear and this will keep it how linear it is you can turn this at a speed that you're comfortable with when you are filming so this is really helpful for people that do manual focus so i'm going to turn it to non-linear and see how it feels like oh it's so difficult to pull focus you just bump a bit that's all so I'm going to turn this to maximum and see what happens, which is above 720 degrees. Oh, this is so slow now. I have to like turn forever. Okay, this is not working. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh remember this video that I did quite some time ago about how you should have your aperture priority using auto ISO instead of changing anything else? This by default is already on manual mode and when I turned the auto ISO on and went on to this feature, I still remember that certain Nikon menu has this problem where there is a bug where even if you turn this on, it will still be changing your shutter speed. But here's the beautiful thing, I turn on auto ISO and then I set the maximum sensitivity on my ISO and then go in my minimum has to be 60. Now watch this, I am not even on aperture priority. Increase my shutter speed, you virtually see no difference in the screen's exposure. That's how incremental it is. But because I set my auto ISO to a maximum of 1600, when I hit 1600, it won't go up anymore. See that? And the exposure starts getting darker. So what you need to do is go to your menu because this Z8 is so good in exposure you can actually increase this to 25,000 right so I'm doing that now when I do this at this point it makes out at 25,000 all right so since I'm at a high shutter speed let's try out the burst mode at 20 frames per second that's it you hear nothing there is no sound <laughs> you couldn't hear it from here right could you hear it from here and zero blackout this is crazy this was what i shot so if i play back this and scroll this it virtually didn't move it's it's that fast on the auto ISO. Okay. 
So the ISO now here is, oh, the exposure just improved dramatically. And outside, wow. The auto ISO was really good. Can you do the same with your, try? Put on auto ISO, do like what I did in T-Ray and then just head on outside and see whether you are handling exposure like a champ. the red box shows you that you are already recording so for the famous cinematographers that I work with that forgets to roll you will not forget to roll so you can see that whatever faces that falls into this red binding box will only be scanned and tracked so if I move it out of this box it will stop and move this man's face here and the face detection works again so that's what the red binding box for focusing is it limits what falls in there as a subject press this down and you can now change this size of the box to any size that you want. So it goes from very small to bigger, to rectangular, to a vertical one. And then finally, back to small. And so I like this. So you can actually move this now to where you want it to be. So if you're shooting sports and the athlete's face is up here and you want to limit to here, that's what you do. Full size HDMI, look at that. And then you have two USB-C, one for charging, one for your accessory. So you can charge and use something else at the same time. Okay, time to return this and go home. But as usual, don't forget to take out your own SD card. Remember there was a time when we were doing cinematography shoots and we need those big some young or zin lenses that have this gear for you to pull focus well now they can be done with all these auto touch screen lenses like this this is where the buffer is too oh great i just fill up the sd card <laughs> I'm shooting ceiling. The auto ISO wasn't on. The auto ISO wasn't on. <laughs>